Countdown. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, and I'm Lisa. And I'm Brad. And hey. on this episode, we are doing The Devil and Me by Clutch. Yay! One of I'm my excited. all-time favorite bands. Yes, it is so, one of Brad's favorite bands. And one ever. of my favorite songs. So, I'm pretty excited about this one. Good. So. I'm excited, too. So, the songwriters, they had... Them all written down. Dan Means, Gene Paul, Gaster, Neil Fallon, whatever. <laughs> Richard Timothy Salt. All right, you um, got to name which ones are which. Oh, I didn't write that on mine. Did I write it on yours? No, I just know over there. Well, Neil Fallon's the singer. Okay. You got Dan, that one correct. Dan Means is the drummer. Yep. Jean Paul. No, you're wrong. Oh, sh- my bad. Shoot. Dan Means is not the drummer. Guitarist? No. Bass. There you go. Okay. <laughs> He's the bass. Jean-Paul Gaster is the drummer. Yep. And then Richard Timothy Salt is a guitarist. He was going by Tim Salt. Oh, okay. Tim Salt. The album is From Beale Street to Oblivion mm-hmm. and Such released in 2007. And they have the genre as blues and rock. Is that correct, Brad? Yes. Oh, okay. I would think their early stuff is a little more, probably less bluesy, but still, it's always been like blues influenced, kind of. Mm-hmm. You can tell they were from that. But yeah, they're definitely got a bluesy side, especially this song, even, has got a bluesy feel to it. Mm-hmm. And then. Definitely a rock, and that's and they what I are. Like. I love listening to them, so it's very. Ex- mm-hmm. I'm very excited that Brad had turned me on to Clutch, and we did get yeah. to see them live. We did. They were. It amazing. sounds like we go to a lot of concerts, and we don't. Right. We really don't. This is the last one I've actually been. This to, just I makes think. us feel cool. It does make it. We need to go to more Please after do. this COVID shit is over. Yeah. Um. But this concert I was enjoyed the concert so much. So good. It was really good. Neil Fallon is such. Oh. Uh, he's a, such a rock star up there. Like he, man, he moves at, on that stage yeah. from left to right, back forth. He yeah. does this whole like. If you could see me, I'd show you, but I can't. So, like, <laughs> can do it he does, like, a like lunge, that. a forward lunge. Yeah. And then, like, he'll grab, like, with one fist that he's not holding the mic with, obviously, up in the air. And it's like he's, like, he's, like, grunting these words. Yeah, and he's embracing the rock. He really that. gets into his music. Yeah. It was by far the best experience. Well, I mean, the quality was amazing. Oh, yeah, it was Their really good. Their sound quality was It was really good that perfect. night. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... I've been to a lot of good concerts or a few good concerts in ways that are good quality, but this one just his that was really good. Yeah, you know, yeah, his just frontmanship, you know, being mm-hmm. up there and getting you pumped. It was yeah. just amazing. And we were kind of on the way this setup was was they had the floor standing room only, yeah, and then they did have you could go up to the second floor and they had like railings all the way around. So we like a, got yeah, like a balcony. Stuff. Yeah. So we went up into the balcony cause I'm really short. I can't yeah. see very well. So we thought that would be the best advantage point. And be- it wasn't a huge area. So it's not like we were that far away. We're not yeah. talking stadium. Right. Still a lot of people, but not stadium quality. And I like those smaller venues. I really, really Absolutely. like them. So this was, it was a fun memory for me. Yeah. I loved it. It kicked ass. They did a lot of my favorite songs and mm-hmm. so, but I like to see them again because I know they change up their their uh, set list like every show almost. Mm-hmm. So there's always something. Yeah, different. and they did yeah. have they had to cancel their con- their uh, the rest of their tour obviously. Yeah. Um, so they the you know as soon as things can get going they'll. Uh, but I guess they're doing what I read was they're doing they're still releasing their set list for those concerts that they had to cancel. Okay. So they're still releasing the set list. And doing some sort of special, like, virtual show. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. All right. So, the drink of the day is another beer. Beer. All right. This one, I went a little crazy on this one for me because I don't do flavored stuff very well. Well, I mean, you do, but you don't do fruity Not, flavored. Right. This is Beaver Island Brewing. It's Tangerine American Wheat. So it's a tangerine wheat ale. It says a damn fine beer. So, um, That's what it says. crafted with heart from the heart of Minnesota. So a lot of these we choose like local beers. Yeah. Just because I like to experiment 
I like to try new stuff. Mm-hmm. The finest ingredients. Artfully brewed. Artfully brewed to perfection. to perfection. I mean, you can't. I mean, this is perfection. This does right on the can. So oh, yeah. So it this, has to be. this brew is spiked with tangerines, crafting a refreshing twist on an American wheat. It's like sunshine in a glass. Right. And it's brewed to perfection. I mean, if you put that on your can, it's perfect. It's a yeah. perfect beer. So well, it's 4.5% it alcohol. It be sunshine in a glass. Um, so it's not super strong. So it must be kind of a lighter. It should be a lighter one. 4.5. The one we did on the last podcast, that one was what? 9.1% yeah. alcohol. And that was a porter. So that was a pretty stout. I didn't finish that one. I got to be truthful. I did not finish I that one. It got better as you got towards the bottom. All right, so let's try this. All right, are we ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Make the sound of that. Here we go. Smells good. I don't know if it does smell good. I mean, it just tastes like beer to me. Like, like just a beer. Mm -mm. It's got something to it. (laughs) It's got, I don't know. I can smell the tangerine. A little bit. A little bit. Smells a little funky, but a little tangerine in there. <laughs> it is better than the last one, though. The aftertaste is better. Like, the smell is like the... supposed Like the... Tastes like a fresh tangerine. You know, it's not very sweet smelling or nothing. I mean, it just tastes like beer to me. I'm not... Like I said, I'm just not that great with beers. I can taste the... To me, it almost tastes more like grapefruit than orange, but... I don't get tangerine. That's for sure. Yeah, it's more like I said, it's more of a grapefruit kind of citrusy. But I, can de- I think what happens is I can taste that wheat. Like, I can't get it past the wheat taste mm. of the beer. But I can actually, I think I can drink this one. It's not bad. I don't think I'll be dumping it. No, you won't be dumping this one. <laughs> I like right. it. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, I'm not usually a fruity kind of drink kind of guy but uh i was hoping I drink it. for a little bit more fruit i'm not gonna lie well you don't like beer i know <laughs> so that's to drink was, a beer i was so good that <laughs> it's like like i said like the it said sunshine in a can it's brewed to perfection it even says so <laughs> but i was expecting more that tangerine perfect tangerine beer <laughs> i mean <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be false advertising. And, I think uh, for the next one, the Beaver one, Island Brewing would not do false advertising. I have to go back to a mixed drink on the next one. I think I need something fruity, so because I need a little bit more fruit in my life. Yeah, well, I mean, it does not taste like tangerine. Is tangerine a fruit? It is. It's like okay. an orange. It's weird. <laughs> You've never had a tangerine before. I've had tangerine. Oh, okay. So you think right. of fruit? You think of smaller? So this stuff. next part. All right. It's game time. Back why that's what we're here for, right? The lyrics. Yeah. No, but we're not doing the lyrics yet. Oh, we're not. Put okay. those down. It's game time. My silly. All right. Brad doesn't have this part because the game is for him since this is his favorite band. I'm so scared. So what I'm doing is I found four songs. I'm going to read the lyrics. Uh, just a couple lyrics for the song and he's got to try to guess what the songs song. Really? I'm not, don't try to play that with me. <laughs> try to get me. You're such a cheater. Okay. All right. Hit it. Dream with the feathers of angels stuffed beneath your head. I know it. Regulator. Yes. I didn't even get to read the second one. We can read it anyways. Come with me and walk the longest mile. Yeah. I kind of figured That's you could get it with that one. one though. Okay. Ready? The num- So you got a point. So here's the next one. Sector vector eat them all. Sector. I need the next one. Okay. Periodic table with a centerpiece of mine. Oh, I know this one. What was the name of it? I was sneaking. Damn, this one. Oh. Damn it. I know it. I know the song as soon as you say the name of it. But I can't. <laughs> the name is one zero 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 one 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 zero one zero one. I knew the song. I couldn't <laughs> think of the name. Why did they name it with numbers? It's split like the periodic table. 
Well, I get, yeah, that's why I said periodic tale. That's, I know that. That's, that's what... why I gave you that lyric because I thought, okay, yeah, we'll see if he gets that. Okay, so one point for me because I stumped you. Don't get you. a point. Yes, because I stumped I just... you. Okay, ready? Yep. I sneak up to the coop and see them chewing on the bones. Next one. Let's get our business cards certified. What really the hell is that? <laughs> it's in the song. I don't. That one's not ringing a bell. Ghoul Wrangler. Mm, okay. You know, that's why they're getting their business cards certified, because they're going to be ghoul wranglers. Okay. Isn't that a fun one? So point to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little fist pump. You didn't get to see it. Right, you did That's... a Neil Fallon there. Like, Ew. Yeah. Okay. Fourth one. Last one. All Ready? Right. Yeah. Swan diving off the tongues of crippled giants. Give me the next one. Tipping cows in fields Elysian. Okay. I I know that lyric. Oh, come on. I did it especially for you. You did. Something that you're known for. Having a great one of. That confused me more. <laughs> you know, every all the male guys are jealous because you have a better burning one. beard. Yes, yeah. burning beard. That gave it away. I knew the I knew the lyric. I just couldn't think of the what. All right, so we tied. We tied. I mean, kind <sighs> well, of. I came out of. ahead, but how'd you come out ahead? Two and two. I mean, because I had to give you extra hints on that. That's last your own one. fault. That's not my own fault. I all won. right, I won. Lyric time. I should have got four songs for you. I wouldn't. That would have been a competition. No. I don't know the names of the songs. That's not my fault. This is your favorite band. You should have gotten all of them. Hey. Embarrassed for you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You ready? I'm ready. I'm going to read these lyrics. The Devil and Me. The Devil and Me had a falling out violation of contract beyond a shadow of doubt. Wherever he go, whomever he meet, he got to cross my house on the other side of the street. And you know that's the truth. Now here's the part that the devil sings while he's hanging his head in a hard rain. Where I'm headed, I don't know. Down this path we all go. Grace and luck, blood from stone, got nowhere to call my home. What comes around goes around threefold or more. Now you can't get off that killing floor. I'm going back to Tennessee, back where I came from. Gonna head back to Beale Street, Beale Street and Oblivion. The devil and me, bad blood and beef. An undisciplined child, a liar and a thief. It's a low-down shame we were the best of friends, but I suppose all good things got to come to an end. What comes around goes round threefold or more. Now you can't get off that killing floor. I'm going back to Tennessee, back where I came from. Gonna head back to Beale Street, Beale Street in Oblivion. Gotta get off of that killing floor. That's it. I'm going to be honest. I mm-hmm. thought there was more to the song than that. <laughs> that is... Um... No, quite a bit of them did not have a lot to them, but they're right. all really great songs. Oh, well, it's an amazing song. Yeah. And, I mean, the, the whole concept of the story, I just thought was super cool. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be a long, like, winded, lyrical uh, masterpiece to be a great song. Right. So. And as you probably have noticed, we don't rehearse these. We don't, no. We don't go over these together or what we're going to no. talk about. Because I like to... That wouldn't be fun. Like yeah, I like to do it off the cuff, and so like these lyrics, I don't actually. <sighs> sometimes though, we I don't do... really study the lyrics beforehand, no. whereas Lisa writes them all down. But I do. Sometimes I do make us listen to the song right beforehand, just to to like have that fresh in our minds about mm. how it sounded and stuff. And I we didn't do it on this one. Well, this song I know so well. I know. It's a. Uh, I just love the whole concept of the song, though. It's, it's, it's a take of a song that you never, I've never heard done before. Right. That's, that's funny. It's neat. So we'll break it down. The devil and me had a falling out. So that just sets, it's just so funny. Like, like him and the devil were buddies. Yeah. Or so, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we had a deal. We <laughs> well, were, I'm like, we hung really out. Friends we friends with the devil? Or, Cause there's <laughs> another lyric. I'm like, or is he just calling one of his friends a devil? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Neil, I'm like, they're. Like all these guys are so intelligent, mm-hmm. you know. Like 
they're way smarter than I'll ever be. Yeah. So it's just funny how intelligent some of their lyrics are, but but just started off like that. That's what I always thought was fun. It's like him and his buddy, the devil. Like we hung out, we did things, we were homies. Yeah. And then they had a falling out. Violation right. of contract beyond a shadow of a doubt. So I just thought like they had a contract almost. It's just kind know, of funny. It's yeah. just yeah. <laughs> Like him this devil, else, yeah. They had a deal. Like maybe he sold his soul for rock and roll, kind of. Maybe, the yeah. The typical thing, Robert Johnson but type stuff. But the devil violated the contract. He didn't, <laughs> right. he didn't violate the contract. Yeah. So wherever he go, whomever he meet, he got across my house on the other side of the street. So it's almost like a restraining order or something. It's, <laughs> yeah. Like. So that whole verse there yeah. is what always set me. You know, I just love this song because of it. It's just so funny that. So. I didn't, it was just like the devil, you know, he's like this big bad guy, but now right. you got to cross the house on that side of the street. You can't be on my side of the street. It's just, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Then, uh, and you know, that's the truth. Now here's the part that the devil sings while he's hanging his head in a hard rain. So the devil's bummed. Yeah. Cause he just lost his deal. He lost his friend. Yeah. He's like, he broke the contract though. <laughs> so where I'm headed, this is the devil singing now. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Hang, you know, where I'm headed, I don't know. Down this path, we all go. So I was like, <laughs> where I'm headed, I don't know. Like the devil, like, like, like he just... lost his deal. You know, he don't know what's going on no more. <laughs> so down this path, we all go. Grace and luck, blood from stone. Got nowhere to call my home. So well, I, I mean, like, like he doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know the deal they had. But the devil got the short end of the stick on this one. Did he lose? He lost, he lost hell. hell? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. That was part of the contract. Like you, you violated the contract. Guess what? I now get hell. Mm-hmm. You're you're gone. So now the devil, he's lost, man. He ain't got nothing to do. He ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> you didn't have nowhere to call. He's got to be on the other side of the street from Neil. I can't even go on that side of the street no more. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, what comes around goes around threefold or more. You know, that's always an old saying, you know, comes around, goes around. You know, threefold well, is like, you know, it's, it's going to be three times the worst for you from what you dealt someone else. Like if you did oh, someone dirty, is that it's what that karma's going to come back on you three times, you know, hmm. threefold. So, I mean, I've always heard the first part of it, but I've never heard the second part of it. The threefold? Yeah. Yeah. That's always, it's like, it's going to hit you harder than what you did to that person. I kinda. get that. Okay. Gotcha. So now you can't get off that killing floor. So now, what do you mean by that? That line, the killing floor, I mean, that's in a lot of blues songs and stuff like that. And, you know, there was a whole song called The Killing Floor. Oh, and like, I, it's always like, how come the blues is always contributed to the devil and selling your soul and contracts and crossroads? And mm-hmm. why is it? Probably because it originated, you know, you think of the history of the blues, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the old black you know slaves and then up from there you know, they suppose, were hard yeah. working in the field i mean there was a lot of you know they were dealing with a lot of crap now was the whole point like the blues Oops, music sorry. was there and they probably would have sold their soul very easily oh, at that probably. point yeah get out of that lifestyle so i mean that's it was I, always okay. like hardship so that was kind of like hmm. where the blues originated from yeah. just from being down and you know so so now we kick into the verse i'm going back to tennessee back where i come from so obviously so is it the devil still singing i don't know <laughs> i didn't think about that lisa <laughs> i don't think so okay i think this is now him the main character now oh okay yeah okay gonna yep. head back to bill street bill street and oblivion so i'm assuming bill street and oblivion are two streets I mean, maybe. Because you always do like, hey, I'm on a corner of 3rd and 8th or whatever, 3rd and mm-hmm. St. Lawrence. I just made those up, so I don't know. Idea, it's but. funny. is because I never, this is this the album. The name of the album is Beale Street and Oblivion. Yeah. Hmm. I know Beale Street is a street for sure. I mean, besides the fact that it says it right there. But in Oblivion, I don't know. I'm assuming this is just another road. Right. The Devil and Me, Bad Blood and Beef. So that's just covering that they had some tough times mm-hmm. together. Didn't go well. An undisciplined child, a liar, and a thief. So, so he's I'm... calling the devil <laughs> an undisciplined child. Liar and a thief. And a thief, yeah. Right. 
So like they had a deal and he went he went wrong on it. This that... dude, he's undisciplined child. <laughs> he's an undisciplined child. How bad do you have to be as the right. devil to be called an undisciplined <laughs> child? Like That's no wonder just... he was hanging his head. Right. Like he totally got scolded. Absolutely. <laughs> to low down shame, we were the best of friends. So uh, it's just kind of, it's just, that's what I like about it. Mm-hmm. But I suppose all good things got to come to an end. Well, they were best friends. They hung out together. Yeah. The devil gone and done them dirty and broke his contract. Mm-hmm. Acted like a little selfish child. <laughs> Undisciplined <laughs> child. Where am I at here? Uh, but I suppose, but I suppose all good things, things got to come to an end. Yeah. What comes around goes around threefold or more. Now you can't get off of that killing floor. Going back to Tennessee, back where I come from. Going to head back to Bill Street, Bill Street in Oblivion. Got to get off that killing floor. But, so there's not a whole lot to the song. No, there's not, but I, it's very... I kind of thought there was a little more lyrics than that. Uh, but that's funny, though. Just the whole concept of the song, like, just being friends with the devil, and the devil screwed up, and you're like, no, man, you broke our contract. You know, now you got to cross the street over mm-hmm. there. You can't, you got no home no more. Oh, I gotta just... be, you know what? I wrote these lyrics down, but I still did not really pay attention, I don't think, because. You didn't catch that? I didn't catch that. No, I didn't <laughs> so... catch that. They were, fr- he was friends with the devil, and yeah. that the devil was a undisciplined child and got out of his contract and lost hell. And <laughs> Right. I mean, just right from the gate, you know, that's what I love the devil in me, you know, had a falling out. Yeah. That's the first lines, you know, and it's just. I always thought that was just super cool. That's I've never heard a song come from that perspective before. Right. But, I mean, Clutch has so many amazing songs. And, you know, there's lyrics that are way above my head. I don't even know what the hell he's talking about half the time. Just because he's, like, in the periodic tables and all yeah. that stuff, you know. He's super intelligent. Yeah. But there's a lot, of, a lot of great lines, so. Well, let's learn a little bit about Clutch. Clutch is an American rock band from Maryland. Since it formed in 1991, the band lineup has included Tim Salt. Oh, this is where I put what they were. Lead guitar. Oh, that's a shame. I even wrote it down. <laughs> Lead guitar, Dan Maines, bass, John Paul Gaster drums, and Neil Fallon vocals, rhythm guitar, keyboard. Although, I think he mostly does vocals. He, uh, the last few albums, he's really gotten more guitar playing. Oh, okay. In the very beginning, I don't think he really played guitar at all. I think he picked he up a getting... guitar like maybe once or twice yeah. at that concert. That he we did a few to. times, yeah. All right. So to date, Clutch has released 12 studio albums yes. and several rarities and live albums. So they're really, um, they love music. They like to release their music. They like yeah. to get the their fans in, um, involved and give them stuff to listen to. Since 2008, the band has been signed to their own record label. So common nowadays. Mm-hmm. Weathermaker. So that's their record label is Weathermaker. Yep. Neil Fallon says, I can't imagine being a songwriter and not reading. His favorite reading genre is science fiction. And that makes total sense yes, after does. all the yes. stuff he writes about. While literature plays a big role in Fallon's creative process, a calm headspace is vital when he's writing lyrics to generate ideas. So he gardens because it's zenful and a great way to clear the creative cobweb. So he gardens a lot. You hear that you a lot that? about creative people. They have to, yeah, something just really peaceful. They have to go find right. and have that hobby. Yeah, that's different from what they want, that they're making a living or whatever they're trying to pursue. And it just helps them clear their head and, mm-hmm. you know. Which is, yeah. So he does a lot of um, reading too, which. Right generates that so it's really interesting because you wonder like what did he read to you know inspire this song you know what i mean <laughs> right so or some of them like um shining cadillacness or what you know he mm. has a lot of weird songs right. so it makes complete sense that it's like he likes science fiction and yeah all that stuff yeah absolutely he's a lot of those songs i know one I can't remember what album it was, but I remember reading a story a long time ago about they went and uh, to record this album, they went to an old cabin, basically, and they mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere. And there was like below the floorboards, there was like black snakes that lived under there. So there was constantly like black snakes going oh. under the 
I mean, they're... <laughs> What's been staying in that cabin? Well, black snakes are good for... They eat other, like... They'll oh, eat, like, water okay, moccasins and still. stuff. But, uh... But to just imagine being... I can't remember what album it was either, but... They wrote but the whole album there? Yeah, so it was like... Wow. They were there to record it and everything else, and... So, I think it was recording. I don't know. Details are a little fuzzy. It was a long time ago, but... Yeah. But I remember their stay there. Yeah. So, I mean, just the experience of... You know, that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and they incorporate it. And... Uh, they've stayed, I mean, 1991, did I say? Like, man, they've yeah. been together for a long mm-hmm. time. And, like, these, the main people have stayed together a long time, and that's kind of a rarity, too, because most bands kind of break up. Yeah. I remember first so... hearing about them. I think when I really got into them was, like, when that movie Escape from L.A., um can't remember the main actor's name michael douglas i think maybe or mm, i have no idea i don't think i even listened or watched that movie yeah anyways they had a, i think one or two songs on that soundtrack oh, okay so that's where i heard him i know it was escape from the prison planet was the one main oh, song i remember hearing okay and it was just a super cool it was off their self-titled album mm-hmm. and uh that's where i got into him and then i met at work i met another guy who was into him which was crazy because nobody else has really heard of him at that mm-hmm. point and he had like a a different album so we started trading and then it just they grew from there and you know we pretty much have listened to every single album you know, mm-hmm. multiple times and yeah it's so good yeah they're really good um, just the lyrics so many songs we could talk about from them but yeah yeah like i said they have a lot of really great songs um and when i was trying to find the right one to go over the lyrics you finally said well i want to do this one so we did mm. this one but there's not a whole, I mean, they aren't that long, but they're really, really good. And right. really, the the way he writes is very um, not cliched at all. Like, like you know <laughs> right. what I mean? I just. Oh, absolutely. Like, like the Soap Makers. That's one of my favorite songs, too. That's off one of their old albums, I think, Elephant Writers, I think. Um, but it's about little tiny people. Like, somebody discovers them, little tiny people that. And it's like, what are you guys doing? You know, kind of thing. And their whole job is to make soap. <laughs> so, but it's a whole story. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. That it's like this crazy. whole interaction. And yeah. When well, that would be fun. The Yeti is a cool song. It's about basically like someone stumbling upon a Yeti and the Yeti is kind of like, you know, like, hey, what time is it? You know, that's the whole mm-hmm. point. <laughs> you know, get the time from him. It's just. Well, and, and that, I mean, if he's an avid re- reader, that's where mm-hmm. he's kind of approaching these songs. Is he wants to tell this story. Right. Um. So that's what he's doing. He's telling a story. Yep. So it's a, great, it's, great, great band. You yeah, guys need you to like, check them out. Their older stuff is a little heavier, a little more harder, you know, more rockish. Their newer stuff is a little more mellow, a little more bluesier, well put together. But mm-hmm. I, mean, I like them all. They just all have their own feel. Mm-hmm. So it's a. Oh, well, I remember uh, Gravel Road. That yes. was a great one. Oh, our. Yeah. Li- our our son, our would... son, who's about to turn sixteen, but he was wearing his little diaper. <laughs> yeah, he'd rock out. He'd this. rock out to that. He'd have his little blow up guitar. Yeah, and he'd be like dancing. And I still have a video of that. And yeah. um, I used to was... crank it on the computer. Yeah, and crank up the. We'd, so we'd have him listen to that song all the time, and yeah. it was like going down that gravel. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. I like it. Yeah, so it was very good stuff. So I recommend checking out Clutch, especially the song. It it's a. Even if you're not into rock music, I think you can still listen to this song and get a kick out of it. You know, it's well written. The music is really cool. Mm-hmm. It's kind of bluesier. And then uh, just yeah, dive into them. Listen to a little bit of their stuff because I think uh, I think you'd enjoy them. Yeah. So, and check out this beer if you're ever in yes, Minnesota. Absolutely, it's a uh, um, Beaver Island Brewing. Yeah, it's a Minnesota beer. It's a tangerine American wheat. I'm not gonna fully support the tangerine movement. Well, I don't taste it though. I can taste it here. Like I said, it tastes more of a. I taste the citrus. It's almost more Citrus-y grapefruity. Wheat. That's what I taste. I don't really get the wheat part, but. Hmm. But uh, check it out. Yep. See what you think. Beaver Island. Try something new is the key. Don't stick to your Michelob Golden or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you dump it down the drain, you dump it down the drain. Right, but I don't think you'll have to dump this no, one. No, this one's light. It's a damn fine beer. It says on the can. <laughs> damn fine beer. It's a damn yep. fine beer. 
All right, guys. Why? Oh, that goes in with beaver. Because they spelled it dam for the beaver. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> they didn't spell you it. You lost like... me for a second. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm like, where the hell did you get beaver from? But the Beaver it's Island Beaver Brewing. Island Brewing. Okay. So that's why they're saying, damn, fine beer. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Very clever, guys. Very clever. Clever indeed. It's a cool can. Yeah. Bunch of outdoorsy type yep. stuff on it. Yep. All right, guys. Um, we're glad you joined us today. Yep. Make sure you share the podcast. Yeah, share it. Go to, to our everybody. Facebook and stuff and, and comment. Share it. Yeah, and comment. Give and... us some uh, suggestions for songs that you like that maybe we don't listen to, so we can break them down. Yeah. Be... With our what we think they are, anyways. Yeah. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.